All right, but now let's begin to extend this. And I was asked a question uh, a week or so ago about undirected edges. So here is an ordinary graph with two vertices marked X and Y. Uh, they're no longer a source and sink because there's nothing special about them. It's just two different vertices in a graph. And this is an ordinary graph. It doesn't have any directions on the edges. So I can talk about disjoint paths from X to Y. And my optimization problem is to find the maximum number of disjoint paths from X to Y. But there are two different notions of what it means for paths to be disjoint. One is that they use their own pipes. So in other words, the edges are distinct. Now back up one slide. Look at the green path and the blue path. The green path and the blue path, of course, share no edges, but they do go through the same vertex. So if I take the edges off, I mean take the directions off, I could talk about disjoint paths from X to Y in either of these two settings. One setting is that you allow paths to use the same vertex, but they must use their own edges. And then the other version of this joint is to make them the stronger condition that they start and end at X and Y respectively, but in between they don't pass through any common vertices. Now, network flows will solve both of these problems. Both of them. The edge version is done with the trivial change that all you do is consider this as a digraph with an edge over and an edge back for every pair, except X and Y. X only points out and Y only points in. Then you turn on Ford Fulkerson and come back and you will have the maximum number of edge disjoint paths. Now, to do the vertex version, you need something that computer scientists call a gadget. So the idea is that if I have an interior vertex, X, I only want one path going through X. Now, network flows, just like we saw with the red, with the green and blue path earlier, will allow more than one path to go through a vertex. In fact, it, it will um, allow a thousand, as long as it, there are enough edges to support it. But if I only want one, I em employ a little gadget. I change my network in which I separate x into an x prime and an x double prime and put an edge between them going like this and I put on that edge a capacity of one. Now, all the incoming edges go here, so all these guys point in this direction, and then all the outgoing guys go this way. So whatever, whatever I had up here, I copied down here, but I split it into the two sides. And now, when flow comes in, how much can pass across this? Only one. And so that little trick allows me to turn on Ford Fulkerson on this network, and now only one color of one path will go through the node X because of this bridge right here. These kinds of tricks are called gadgets. And they crop up all the time in computer science, where you have a machine which solves one class of problems. And now your problem comes in, and it looks like this. It's a little different. So you create a gadget which converts this problem into this one, solve this problem, then undo the gadget, and read the answer. So 
a very standard kind of idea.